uh, now the induction and repression of enzyme synthesis and this leads to changes in the number of enzyme molecule in well fed state the increased insulin induces the synthesis of key enzymes in the well fed state glucose is high and that is why the insulin is high and the key enzymes for synthesis of fatty acids that is acetyl coenzyme a carboxylase and fatty acid synthase in fast state glucagon is high and that induces the phosphoenol pyruvate carboxy kinase of gluconeogenesis pathway and so in fast state there is uh, gl glucose is not uh, available so gluconeogenesis is induced by this glucagon the enzymes of gluconeogenesis this insulin and glucagon both hormone affect gene transcription you see the liver uh, is the main site uh, for uh, metabolic uh, activities and here is the adipose tissue and here in in the left side is the skeletal muscle what happens glycogen is stored the either glycogenesis happens or glycogenolysis or the synthesis or breakdown of glycogen then convert it to glucose then glucose enters the glycolysis and uh, now then we get acetyl coenzyme a which has different uh, fates it may be uh, goes to cholesterol synthesis then bile acids or uh, fatty acid synthesis and the fatty acid synthesis then triglyceride and which is uh, excreted from liver in the form of vldl and that goes again deposited in uh, uh, adipose tissue where it is stored or if required then it is again broken down to fatty acids and glycerol and then fatty acids comes to in the uh, metabolic pathway and enters into the ketogenesis and this ketogenesis produces ketone bodies which is uh, utilized by brain and this uh, gluconeogenesis from skeletal muscle from amino acids alanine glucose alanine cycle and the protein uh, and it, which is broken down and which is uh, which enters the liver and there with uh, gluconeogenesis it produces again glucose and this is the cycle of our energy uh, requirement of our different organs liver after a meal what happens there is increased absorbed nutrients an increased level of insulin and this liver takes up carbohydrate lipids and most amino acids which is metabolized stored or routed to other tissues in that way liver smooths out potentially broad fluctuations in the availability of nutrients for peripheral tissue and what happens to insulin level during the fasting state or during the fed state you see insulin is increased when we take breakfast when we take a snack when we take lunch when we take dinner and it is decreased where when we are taking nothing by mouth or we are not taking any thing and uh, any food and you see the level of insulin is different with breakfast and different with snacks and that depends on the availability of substrate or uh, level of glucose and the the in accordingly the insulin level is high or low what happens to carbohydrate metabolism in liver during fed state the liver is net consumer of glucose which retains 60 g of 100 g of glucose presented to portal system this increased glucose is uh, taken by hepatocytes through glut2 which is insulin independent which is having low affinity and high km for glucose that is why when the glucose level is high only then hepatocytes take up the glucose by glut2 and this increased hepatic glucose leads to different situations the uh, number one the increased glucose phosphorylation there is increased glucose and through glucokinase which is having high km value for glucose so when the level is high 
uh, when the glucose is uh, uh, extra plenty only then glucokinase phosphorylates the glucose and no, there is no direct product inhibition has a sigmoidal reaction curve having high Vmax and leads to effective removal of flood of glucose in this way minimizing hyperglycemia during absorptive period. The second one is increased glycogenesis. Glucose 6-phosphate, glucose is phosphorylated and then it converts to glycogen by the enzyme glycogen synthase which is active in a dephosphorylated state and that increased substrate that is uh, glucose 6-phosphate is the positive allosteric activator of glycogen synthase. Number three is increased pentose phosphate pathway activity. This increased glucose 6-phosphate and active use of NADPH. During the fed state, lipogenesis takes place where NADPH is utilized and this stimulates the uh, pentose phosphate pathway where NADPH is produced. Uh, the fourth one is increased glycolysis. Increased glucose leads to increased glycolysis. Increased insulin glucagon ratio stimulates this glycolysis. Glucose is converted to pyruvate due to increased amounts of regulatory enzymes of glycolysis which is induced by insulin. That is glucokinase, PFK and pyruvate kinase. In the PFK allosteric activated by f 26 bisphosphate and this PDH is active as uh, PDH is pyruvate dehydrogenase is active dephosphorylated form because pyruvate inhibits PDH kinase. It is not uh, phosphorylated and it is active in dephosphorylated state and this leads to the formation of synthesis of acetyl coenzyme A from the pyruvate. Uh, the fifth one is decreased glucose production. That means you are, have, you are having plenty of glucose, no need of extra glucose. So, gluconeogenesis and glycogenolysis both are inhibited. The pyruvate carboxylase, the first enzyme of gluconeogenesis, inactive due to the decreased acetyl coenzyme A, which is its allosteric activator. Now, the in fed state, acetyl coenzyme A is utilized for a synthetic purpose, a structural purpose, and that is why gluconeogenesis and is uh, decreased. Glycogenolysis is inhibited by dephosphorylation of glycogen phosphorylase and phosphorylase kinase. And increased uptake and decreased production of blood glucose in the absorptive period prevents the hyperglycemia. Now the fat metabolism in liver during fed state. What happens? Number one, increased fatty acid synthesis. We are having substrates due to increased acetyl coenzyme A in the absorptive state, increased NADPH from uh, pentose phosphate pathway and activation of acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase by dephosphorylation and presence of allosteric activator that is citrate. We get citrate from the oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme A, uh, which is the first step of Krebs cycle. And this citrate is the allosteric activator of activation of. ACC that is acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase. This citrate indirectly inhibits fatty acid degradation as rate limiting state that is acetyl coenzyme A converting to malonyl coenzyme A by inhibiting CPT carnitine for palmitoyl transferase 1 of fatty acid oxidation that is beta oxidation. That is the enzyme for carnitine shattering. And what happens again with the increased fatty acid synthesis? It uh, functions as a source for cytosolic acetyl coenzyme A. Uh, what happens?